welcome to Healthy for Life. I'm Dr. Scott McCann, the Director of Health Education with the Santa Barbara County Public Health Department, and this is my colleague and co-host Jacqueline Nielsen, who's a Program Administrator with the Public Health Department. Yeah, Healthy for Life is about promoting healthy behaviors and preventing health problems. And this shows about workplace wellness, a popular topic right now. We're trying to help businesses, uh, employers, and employees practice more healthy behaviors at work and then carry some of that home to prevent disease, injury, and, and be healthy and well. Yeah, and most adults spend their waking hours at work, and a lot of us sit when we work. More and more, eight hours a day sitting. Eight plus, yeah. 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 So got it. Wait, we're going to talk about some ways to get up and move at work and uh, break up the day and maintain your health. Yeah, well, we talked about that last time, how um, dangerous sitting can be for prolonged periods of time. It actually leads to increased risks of heart attack, stroke, and other harmful health conditions. So, so we're doing our move. show standing up again. You can't tell because you can only see from the waist up, <laughs> but we are indeed uh, standing. There's a foot. Uh, so and we're going to try to move around a little bit. Um, at, at public health, we've got, uh, we were fortunate enough as part of our focus on uh, wellness uh, to get a grant from the Orfila Foundation, a uh, local foundation in Santa Barbara that supports a lot of great programs, a health oriented thing. Mm -hmm. And with that money, we were able to hire a uh, national wellness consultant. And Seth has actually worked with a lot of major organizations like Walmart, um, Chef Oliveira, is that right? Jamie Oliver. Oliver? Yeah. Yeah, and um, we're so privileged to have him here with us. Yeah, so let's welcome Seth Nickinson. Come on over. Come on down. <laughs> good afternoon. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice to good see, to you. see you. Thanks for being here. It's yeah. a pleasure. So tell us, how did you get into the wellness business? Yeah, Scott, Jacqueline, you know, I was working with a number of large companies, really on environmental sustainability, which is another issue that's important to people here in Santa Barbara. And what we found was we were asking individuals to commit to one small thing that would be good for them, good for their community, good for the people around them. And we were really surprised by how many people picked something that was health related. They made a new health behavior in their lives. Great. Mm. Great. So mm -hmm. it carries over into your full life, really. Um, well, we're going to talk about some of those things and, and uh, specifically uh, some of the impacts of this. Now, I, I think. Uh, it seems to me that uh, employers have a stake in this as well as the employee who's trying to stay healthy, but what's, what's in it for businesses or employers who implement some of the things we're going to talk about? Sure. Well, the truth is when your employees aren't healthy, they can't be as good at their jobs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our estimates are that it costs employers in Santa Barbara County about $435 million in lost uh, time and productivity when people are sick. Mm. And the interesting thing is that's not only from people being out of office or being out of the fields or making a disability claim. It's also just people showing up mm. but because they don't feel well not being super productive. Mm. That's what we call presenteeism. I'm at work but I'm kind of out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything we can do to stay healthier helps us all be part of a better team. Great. So what have we learned about workplace wellness? Well, we've learned a couple things. One is that we've learned that workplace wellness pays off. Really, the research shows that, uh, for, this is for the employers out there, if you do it right, you'll get about a six to, one, 6 to 1 ratio of return if you put that time and energy into wellness. But what does it mean to do it right? It means you've got to have it going from the bottom up and the top down, which means your employees individually have to be interested and engaged. It can't be boring. It can't be telling them what to do. Mm -hmm. At the same time, they need the support from the employer. You've got to give some people some time to plan this project. You've got to encourage it. And you have to have the top leadership really modeling, this is important. I'm participating too, and I encourage all of you to. We're a place that cares about our people. That makes sense. Yeah, and it's a great uh, benefit, return on investment, and I six guess. Six to one. It's, that's yeah, that's for every dollar you spend, you save Which all my investments six. return like that. <laughs> yeah, really. But uh, at, and at Public Health, we've been focusing on this. Seth's working with us and two other organizations in Santa Barbara County. And uh, really, we've got a leadership team, some of the things you've described. Uh, we've got a champions group uh, started, and we're planning some of the walking challenge. What, mm. what are some other things employers can do to promote their employees' health? Sure. The first thing, as we said, is you've got to get organized. You have to get organized from the top, and you have to create a little group of leaders, a team, a wellness team, a group mm. of champions. Mm. Um, and that means you're going to have to give people a little time. The truth is, 
we, it can't all happen maybe on people's lunch break. So you have to give a few people some time to organize these things in the office. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing you can do is really incentivize people to do different things. You can give discounts on the healthier food if you have a, a cafeteria at your workplace. You can create an incentive for people to bike or walk to work. Maybe you give them a little bonus. Maybe you give them a gift certificate for some walking shoes. Um, you can also uh, create policies that support these behaviors. So you can look at what are we serving in our cafeteria? What are we serving when we have events? What kind of vendors do we let drive onto our property or onto our campus to serve food? Um, what kind of time do we give people to participate in these things? Do we have opportunities for folks to uh, exercise at the workplace? Do we maybe offer gym discounts? Um, we can also create a really supportive environment. So say there's a new mom, do we have a room where they can breastfeed? Mm -hmm. um, or for just an employee who's stressed out, do we have a calm place where someone can just go relax and sit down? We all know that sometimes we need to get away from the busy day. Is there a room in the building or is there a bench in the garden where we can just go have a minute to take those few deep breaths? These are all things that employers can do to create that supportive environment. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It is. Uh, you, you hit a key thing, I think, which is uh, modeling. I know our department director, Dr. Wada, rides his bike mm -hmm. to work. He's part of the walking challenge we're having right now. Uh, he w just was talking recently about eating healthier lunches so he has more energy in the afternoon. Uh, all those things combined and seeing it at the top is motivating and says, gee, I want to do that or we should all do that. One interesting thing we've learned is that uh, personal wellness is really a collective endeavor. Mm -hmm. And the research has really showed us that the network effect matters. What people around you are doing is going to impact how you behave and how you feel. And as Jacqueline said, more and more of us are spending more and more time at work. So if you think about your day when you're not sleeping, at least half of your day is at work. So those are the people you're going to learn from. Not only your kids and parents and neighbors, but the people you work with, your neighbors at work, as it were. So what they do is going to matter. And this is why the workplace, again, can do things like, say you want your people to participate in Weight Watchers or do a yoga class. Can we bring that teacher on to our workplace or mm -hmm. into our workplace mm -hmm. or do it right after work? So even though someone might have to pay out of pocket, which we'd encourage you to pay for them, they can still do it at the workplace with people they know and recognize. And you know what? It helps us be more integrated people because we bring our personal selves to work, which I think is great, too. That's such a good point. Mm -hmm. uh, we've worked at our food service uh, group at, at our workplace on offering healthier meals. Um, but I think you're right. We, and you need, it's nice if the company can put a little money behind it for whether it's exercise equipment or paying for instructors. Uh, we're trying to get all those things going. Right now we're having our annual walking challenge. And are you participating? I'm participating. All right. I think we all are. And uh, we've got, I think, 16, 17 teams with five people each. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, upwards of a hundred people participating. We're, we're talking about prizes we're going to offer and uh, uh, but really it's the camaraderie well, as you were talking Seth, everybody working together and recording their number of steps per day. It's a group and, effort and yeah. then it's more fun. Exactly. Not, and so many things exactly. you do at work can be siloed and just yourself mm -hmm. and the pressure's on you and you can relax and do it with other people you can enjoy it more. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Any other tips for employers? Or I know oh, one other thing we didn't mention. We have a on-site uh, medical clinic for employees, health stat, mm -hmm. and we can go in and get uh, cold care, uh, vaccinations, uh, and you can even bring your older children in, I believe, or up to a certain age. Yes, uh, I think if they're in the members. same insurance program right. as you are, then right. yeah. That's increasingly common, Scott. You know, mm -hmm. whether it's just a simple seasonal flu shot mm -hmm. or ongoing uh, biometrics and basic health, mm -hmm. um, employers are realizing if they want to keep people healthy, they've got to bring the care to them. Yeah. But I want to emphasize, too, that it's not just about what the workplace can do. Individuals have to take responsibility. They, you know, we started the conversation about people taking that one small act for them, and I think that's really important, too. Mm -hmm. So what can employees do, then? Well, the first thing employees can do is get involved with the workplace wellness program. If your employer has been great enough to start something, Join that wellness committee, join that team, or even just within your own little team, step up and be the leader. Um, you can start by modeling different behaviors. You can bring a healthy lunch. Maybe not every day of the week, maybe two or three days a week. Bring a lunch from home. You can use your breaks when you get them, usually mandated by law, to go take a walk. Um, you can uh, get up if you sit at a desk every hour or so and do some stretching. 
Uh, in fact, maybe we should demonstrate a few really basic stretches people can well, do. Go, get ready to do that because I sit at my desk most of the day mm -hmm. and I do little things like if I, instead of calling somebody, I'll walk over and talk to them or instead of putting the mail in the outbox, I'll deliver it by hand. Uh, I think there's little ways you can get it. I got to get up every hour or yes. I just get a sore back and just less productive like you yeah. were saying earlier. But yeah, show us some uh, Well, maybe we can all do here. them together. So uh, let's game. just okay. stand with right. our feet shoulders. Let's say we just got up from our desks. And, okay. Um, maybe we just roll our shoulders backwards really mm. slowly. Do five shoulder rolls. I feel that a little in my neck. And then we do them forward. It works great for television hosts too, as well as office yeah. workers. Yeah. And then relax now and maybe we do a little bit with our necks too. Often many of us have bad posture. So let's just let our necks sink forward, chin down to our chest, not forcing it, just relaxing. And then let's bring our heads up to even and lean them back a little bit. And you're nice and relaxed and you might just feel that. Let's mm -hmm. lean them off to the right and left. Scott's got it. Oh yeah. These are some of the real basic things we can do. Um, it's super simple and it just takes a little bit of tension and really you can do it for 30 seconds. That's the great thing. Yeah. Um, hey, there's an exercise program I'll mention that came on our computers. It's called Exercise Break and you can actually program it for every period you set to remind you to do some of these things. And It has about 20 or 30 different little mm -hmm. office stretches you can do and anything that helps you remi remind you to do it, really. We can also um, do moving meetings. You know, if you mm. have to go have a conversation mm. with someone, just go take a little walk. You know, go around the building. It usually lightens up the conversation and it makes you feel better. Yeah. Yeah, I actually just made a commitment for someone I meet with regularly. Our next meeting is going to be a walking meeting. Good for you. And so one more great behavior we always try and emphasize, simple behavior, is to have people get more hydrated and drink more water. So in fact, Scott, I think you have a my, demo for us, that's right? That's my cue here. <laughs> um, we do. We, we've got something people are calling spa water, which is regular water with uh, fruits added uh, to flavor it up or low. You can use vegetables. Jack, we actually have two. We have strawberries and pineapple. pineapple. Which would you prefer? Well, you have the pineapple in your hand, right. so I'll try pineapple that one. Water. And it's nice. It's not an overwhelming flavor, but uh, Seth, what do sure, you think? Sure, it looks great, pineapple? Scott. Yeah. Thank you. But it adds a little taste, and I don't know about you, but Santa Barbara area water is not the mm. best mm. <laughs> flavored, but you throw in a little fruit and all of a sudden it's It's, it's funny. It does stuff. remind me of being at the spa, which is a relaxing huh? effort because that's the only time you have flavored water, really. Mm. So that's mm. that's nice. It is good. It's delicious. Yeah. And in case you think we're making this stuff up, Scott, this is one of those things that's already happening at the public health department. Isn't that right? It's mm -hmm. wonderful. It's and, and I'm glad you mentioned that. We're doing uh, something called Fruity Fridays where staff uh, volunteer to bring in uh, fruit or sometimes vegetables and share them uh, with their colleagues. I brought my bag of apples today. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Good for you. And pe it, it, it's, it's a morale builder, too. It's not just the physical health, but people start getting into it and sharing and talking, and uh, it's good all the way around, I think. Well, it's also if you're hungry and you see that there's readily available delicious fruit, you might be more inclined to do that than spend a dollar or two in the vending machine with something unhealthy. Right, and vending machine's a good point. We've addressed our vending machine policy. It's been a 50-50 healthy not so healthy uh, rule with the the providers but we're actually trying to move toward a hundred percent healthy items and you can get vending machines now mm -hmm. that are specific to fruit you can have water in it instead of soda all those things are within the organization's control and, and something people can work on mm -hmm. and if I'm not mistaken Scott we've actually got some video that you took of employees at public health department talking about things they are doing right yeah let's let's take a look at that One thing that I do to stay healthy at work is try to take at least one 15-minute walking break a day. I usually go to the gym every morning before I come into uh, work. I'm a fit champion, and this committee we've been trying to develop ideas um, to get staff excited about um, fitness and health. So we've decided to do some Zumba classes. On my breaks in the morning and the afternoon, I take a 15-minute walk, and I walk with weights. Make my arms strong and my brain healthy. And during my break time, I actually go for my walks, and that's my 15-minute walk that I do. I encourage all my coworkers to go with me. After work, I actually go for my run. So I do like about 30 to an hour kind of run. My friend and myself, uh, we walk in our breaks, and, and I walk after work too. We eat our snack, which is fruit or veggies, while we're taking our, our walk. We enjoy the day. Our break, we relax, and we eat at the same time our fruit. In the morning, I eat uh, 
dates in peanuts for breakfast or uh, hemp cereal, um, dried fruit. And I usually pack myself a pretty healthy snack, so as you can see here. Ooh. If I'll eat it all every day, sometimes I will. When you get out of work also, it's nice to have something with you because you know you get hungry and you avoid going through the drive through in the afternoon. So I'll come into my room and, and close the door and make sure no one sees me and um, I'll get down on, on, the, on the floor and just do a plank position for a minute if I can. I have trouble sitting all day so I have a stand-up desk. I can stand and work or with just the switch of a button I can lower it and then I can sit and work. The biggest thing I try to do is in the afternoon break is to have some kind of fruit, a piece of orange or some kind of thing I bring from home that's fruit that keeps me from getting hungry and then I don't overeat um, when I get home. I drink water. Me and Reggie drink at least eight cups a day because there are no calories and it tastes good. I try about every hour or so to get up and do some kind of errand, like deliver paperwork to someone. I get up every 45 minutes and stretch my legs and walk around a little bit. What I like to do on my breaks is I take a walk. So I walk for about 15 minutes. One thing I do at work to stay healthy is I go on my uh, lunchtime run uh, runs and I also drink plenty of water. I try to you know motivate people to do a lot of fitness drinking water, walking, walking groups. I ride my bicycle every day uh, to and from work. I normally try to park as, uh, as far as I can and walk, walk to my work site. I try to use the stairs as much as possible. I try to eat really healthy actually. I eat uh, throughout the day. In the morning I'll have my shake and then uh, when I take a little break or something I'll have a piece of fruit, healthy lunch, and then something else around 3 o'clock before I leave for um, Home. I'm participating in the walking challenge, so I have my pedometer and it's counting the number of steps that I take every day. I go on walks with the walking group with a couple of women here in my office, and we try to go every day for about 15 to 20 minutes. I go get to get a coffee or a salad or go to drop an envelope, I usually take the stairs. See a lot of good things going on at public health. It's great to see everyone's involvement. Yeah, yeah. And people, it's not just the, uh, we always say preaching to the choir, it's not just the choir anymore. More and more people are getting involved and a, a lot of it is invite a friend to go for a walk, yeah. have some spa water, bring in some fruit, whatever the behavior I is. I see more and more people taking their breaks and getting up and, and taking a 10, 15 minute walk mm -hmm. than I have uh, ever. It's yeah. really encouraging and that makes you want to do that. It's, it's exciting. And use the stairs. That's something we've put up right by the elevators. Notice this, say use the stairs and point in the right direction. And uh, I, I see a lot of people when I'm going up and down mm -hmm. the stairs. And mm -hmm. just little things. I think Seth, you said it early on that if you can do one thing uh, or, and our logo is, is ACT, take one action, uh, whether it's uh, with this kind of stuff we're talking about or at home or uh, in any way. It, it doesn't have to be, you know, join a gym and start working out immediately five times a week. You know? It doesn't have to cost money and it doesn't have to take a lot of time. Right. I think right. those are things that people are afraid of when you think of exercise or being healthy. Yep, those are the barriers. Enjoy yeah. it and it can be free. Absolutely. And the experts in behavior change tell us it takes about 21 days to make a new habit. So really? that's it's three weeks. It's not forever, but right. you can't do it overnight. So right. you have to pick a small habit and just start with that. And then you'll be surprised at what kind of progress you'll make. That's, that's great. That's an interesting fact. Now, now, one thing that became clear is that we are talking mostly about office jobs where you sit all day. Sure. And of course, there are many jobs that involve physical activity or manual mm -hmm. labor. Uh, all the service jobs are on your feet all day, uh, yeah. waiting tables or... Uh, Janitors, construction work, janitor work, absolutely. So, so Seth, what are some tips you have for people who are physically active during the day sure. at their work? Well, it starts with one of the things we just talked about, which is our spa water, right? Mm. It may not be spa mm. water, but staying hydrated is even extra important when you're in a job where you're sweating and active. Yeah. And we get so busy, we just forget to take that drink of water. Mm. Um, and that's going to cause our whole system to be depleted, um, as well as eating healthy snacks. You might grab for a candy bar, because they always advertise good energy, but you're going to rise and crash really fast. And I've worked with a lot of people who really are so surprised when they start to eat a piece of fresh fruit in the afternoon, a banana or an apple, what that does for them in terms of keeping their energy up and nice and stable. So having those healthy snacks. Um, 
If you're out outdoors all day, there's some real basic health practices like applying sunscreen um, mm -hmm. just to protect your skin, mm -hmm. wearing a hat. Um, if you're working you know, as a house cleaner or in the field, um, protecting yourself with a mask or the other appropriate um, basic equipment to keep yourself safe from those toxins. Mm -hmm. uh, those are important things. Um, and then there's the other things like using your tools properly, right? Mm -hmm. Keeping your body in shape. Just like as an office worker, we want to make sure our posture is good and once in a while maybe someone comes and tells us how to do that. Well, if we're mopping a floor or we're shoveling things, we also want to make sure to keep our posture right. Um, we always want to keep our back as straight as possible. We want to bend from the legs. And some of the stretches we talked about earlier, even more important, maybe the office worker, it's our shoulders and neck, but in the mm -hmm. field, we're going to want to stretch our back. We're going to do some of those real basic right, side to side more, ones. Uh, yeah. do more. Yeah. All right. So maybe if we're someone who has had a little more active day, we might start with one where we put our hands over our head and interlock our fingers and reach up. Okay. That might be a good one for us to stretch the back. Well, I need to do that. That feels <laughs> great. We might do the other one. We're going to do this one for you, Scott, where All we right. turn around. Let's okay. show the audience. We put oh, a hand no. over our head. <laughs> yeah. And we can just reach up if we, and just pull the elbow down a little bit. Okay. And some of us can reach behind and grab it, and some of us can't, but that's You're okay. not quite there yet. <laughs> but that should open up in between your shoulder blades. Okay. And then the other one we can do is our real basic left to right. So we can feet shoulder width apart, raise our right hand, and just lean over to our left and let our hands slide down. Mm. And then, oh, I felt that one in my back. Yeah, <laughs> I think I heard that. And then reach <laughs> over to our left. Oh, that's nice. Uh, you know, yeah. These remind me of the basic exercises you do, you know, in preschool and kindergarten. And yet we stop doing them as we get older, and yeah. they're so basic. And we shouldn't. Our yeah. bodies get more brittle, but we stop doing this yeah. stretch. How does that make any sense? It doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those are great. So no matter wow. what kind of workplace it you're in, there's basic stuff you can do to take care of yourself. And then other things like eating healthy, I don't care what kind of job you have, you can think about bringing a tasty meal from home. Absolutely, absolutely. Good. Boy, Those are great ideas. Wonderful. Um, well, and one of the unique things about our project is, is we're trying to get people to take home what they learn or do at work to do with their children or other family members. Uh, so that can be a challenge. You know, you might do it, it's kind of like you're talking about with habits. You start doing it at work, you have it in your routine, but then you get home and you sit in front of the TV or, or uh, and again, we're, I want to tell people we're doing our show standing up. <laughs> so get up while you're watching this show right now, and if you can, and stretch or just, you know, wiggle. rock, wiggle a little, <laughs> move around. But because uh, they say the worst thing you can do is sit for long periods of time, where, wherever you are, at home, work, wherever. Even if you're on a plane, get up. Yeah, you know? I do that. Boy, long plane flights yeah. just kill me if or I don't. Or a long car ride for a business trip, take a break. Absolutely. You stop know, at a rest and stop or around. something and walk yeah. around. Yeah. I mean, this is life threatening stuff to sit for prolonged periods and not get up and move. So, really important. Yeah. Yeah. But, but Seth, how do we get people to carry this stuff home, these good health habits? Sure. You know, if you're going to try eating new foods at lunch, you might as well try eating new foods with your family. And I'm not telling you to go extreme. Maybe you make one new recipe a week and you try it out and you see how it goes over. And if it's a hit, then you add it to the list. Mm -hmm. um, when you go home from work, perhaps you take a walk with your partner or with your kids. You know, Someone this week told me about usually walking her wa dog once a day, but now she's going to walk her dog twice a day. The dog loves it, of course. <laughs> yeah. And so does she. She gets outside more. Um, Going out to the park, as you said, instead of turning on the TV right away, may, we're in the springtime right now when we're filming this show. we got lots of sunlight. Maybe we go outside and, and take a walk. And in Santa Barbara, we get lots of sunny days. Um, we have this idea here about taking part in a TV-free week. Just for one week, not all year. Maybe you give up the TV and you do other activities. Uh, these are all things people can take home. And really focusing on the kids, for those of us who are adults and don't really want to change our habits, Making about our kids might give us a new reason to do it. You know, we look at our little kid, we want to be around for them, we want to be healthy with them, and if it's not our kid, maybe it's our sibling or our grandkid or our niece or nephew or just the kid we babysit. Um, yeah, but yeah. we want to be healthy and be able to participate with them and everything they're doing. So important with the increase in childhood obesity mm -hmm. and kids getting diabetes type 2 now. Yep. Never happened before because activity was built into your life. You rode your bike to work or to school you, or walked. And you, After you, school you, activities. You, you ran around and played and mm -hmm. yeah, ran wild. Like, no internet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No video games, no internet. So now you have to make an effort to do the, to, for yourself and yes. your kids to do yes. these things. But part of it is if we want our kids to do something better, we do. you use that word modeling, Scott, mm -hmm. which means showing them an example. 
And so if we want our kids not to drink that soda because we're worried about them becoming diabetic, if they see us drinking soda, that's the behavior they're going to adopt. Yeah. So that's why this is so important, especially for people whose workplace might be a place where they work with kids. Mm -hmm. Maybe you do work at a school or an after-school program or, or you're a public health nurse and you spend a lot of time around children. It's important for us to show them the kind of behaviors we want to adopt. But again, remember, what we're really saying to the, here today is that it starts with one small thing. You don't have to do all these things at once. Mm -hmm. We've thrown out a lot of ideas, mm -hmm. but I think we all have individual things that we choose to do because they appeal to us. Mm -hmm. One specific thing we're planning, I don't know if we've talked about it yet with you, is the uh, 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 staff picnic uh, through the company yeah, yeah. where people can bring their family and kids and have tooth parts, the healthy picnic food as opposed to maybe the usual hot dogs and hamburgers, but have salads and fruit and, yeah. and uh, some other fresh items. Uh, and physical activities. So that we'll have uh, maybe one of those jumping rooms or three-legged uh, race. Three or exactly, yeah. fun, fun family activities. So that's something employers can do again. As you were, we started talking about, uh, is is sponsor a family picnic. You know. Well, it kind of sounds like you were saying if the employers make it easier for the employees to model behavior, then they'll be more likely to adopt it. If the adults of the household, yeah, you know, start demonstrating or modeling like you were saying then the children will be more likely to do it so it really is a top-down bottom-up approach. It's a virtuous circle so That's great. we create this healthy environment and then the employees can fill that environment and then we create a better workplace culture mm -hmm. right we get this culture of health and then that of course spreads out to our community and back into our homes and Absolutely. then it's reinforcing you know I found in my work when you get past some point enough of a workplace is doing these new things everyone kind of catches on you can go from being an unhealthy workplace to a healthy workplace. It just takes a commitment from some leadership and a commitment from some motivated employees. And if you're watching this show and you stayed with us this long, you probably have a bit of that motivation. Mm -hmm. um, so all you have to do is put it into action. And, and as part of this project, we're going to be setting up uh, a website that people will be able to access. Uh, I think we even have the, the name. It's not up it's yet. It's not up yet, but it's going to be at project-act.com. Okay, good. And that's the, you know, the whole thing is we're calling this Project Act because it's about taking action. That's the most important thing. We're here talking today, but even we got in some drinking of spa water and some stretching. Yeah. The most important thing is that people just pick one thing and do it. Yeah. Um, everything yeah. will ripple out from there. Well, and I love the... the title you came up with the small steps big change mm -hmm. yeah and that it's true and it, it, because it builds on itself you know so you, do, mm -hmm. you but walk the dog mm -hmm. twice instead of once don't go out to lunch every day bring your lunch because uh, the portions are so big at restaurants generally but lots of things people can do. and and meanwhile you can contact me at my work uh 805-681-5270 scott and uh, ask for resources. We're building a big library, Seth is, uh, to help people with this kind of stuff. Uh, and then it, you can also check the county public health website. That's uh, sbcphd.org. And uh, contact us. Check it out. Mm -hmm. We'll have more resources in the next few months as we develop yeah. them. And for and the employers out there, we would love to work with more employers in this county to figure out how to bring these lessons we're learning at Public Health and with our other partners to you. So let's have that conversation. Absolutely. Well, Seth, thank you so much for enlightening us about being healthier and, yeah. and joining us. Yeah. It's been a real it's pleasure. Great. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. So uh, we'll see you next time on Healthy for Life. <laughs>